there's no need to fear. Underdog is here. Time again for the Underdog Show, starring that champion of champions, Underdog. Not a bird, not a plane, not even a frog. Just little low me, Underdog. There's Betsy and his buddy Julie, go, 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 first on the run. The stories of McBrag outrageous, no one could be more courageous. The hunter chased the fox, he tutors on the rocks, and then there's Underdog! 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 Speed and lightning! Lord of Thunder! Fighting all The only way to get rid of him is if he'd forget he's underdog. That's it. Let me look in the fiendish machinery book. Hmm, here it is. Amnesia machine. What's amnesia? Amnesia is when people forget who they are. Now, let's see. Finished. Now to try it out. Get me a volunteer. Here he is. What's all this about? We're taking his senses. Sit down. Now, what's your name? John Smith. Where do you live? 22 Main Street. Well, Simon says, forget it. What's your name? Uh, Puddin' Tane. Ask me again, I'll tell you the same. Good. Where do you live? I live in a tree as high as the moon. I think. Splendid! <laughs> it works! <laughs> you show the gentleman out. Now to try it on underdog. Wait a second, boss. I was reading here in the book and it said this machine won't work on people with hard heads. Hmm. Better run a test. Use the hardest head I know. Sit down, Cad. But wait, I, uh... Simon says sit down! Didn't feel a thing. Back to the old drawing board. Here's a good one. The forget-me-net. When dropped over the victim, it instantly makes him forget who and what he is. Perfect. Directions. Take one large fishnet, soak it overnight in a solution of uranium. <laughs> now to see if it works. Ken, get me a volunteer. Here he is. What is the meaning of this? We're conducting a survey. Name? Professor Heinrich Heinrich von Hein. Occupation? Arithmetic teacher. Good, good. And how much is two times two? Two times two is four. Two times three is six. Two times four is eight. Or Simon says, forget it. What's this loss? 
What's your name? Oh, it's um, uh, Sam. Occupation? Uh, it's a uh, butcher and a baker. The candlestick maker. How much is two times two? Uh, Twenty-three. Uh, Eleven to six. <laughs> it works. Show the gentleman out, cat. To try it, an underdog. Can the forget-me-net make underdog forget who he is? And if he does forget, what will happen? There's a thrilling time ahead in our next exciting episode. King Leonardo was truly having his share of problems. First, True Blue, Odie Colony had been suddenly called away to take care of a sick aunt. Left alone, King Leonardo began having problems almost at once. The palace laundry began piling up. Help! Guards! Help! In the kitchen, the royal dishes went unwashed. Confound it! Can't even find a clean cup. Hmm. I'll just get one from here and wash it myself. Help! With Odie gone, dust went undusted in the throne room. <laughs> <coughs> this is terrible. I must clean up this place. I <laughs> just get the royal vacuum. Plug it in. Help! Guards! Help! Yes, the palace had never looked worse. And neither had the king. It was at exactly this moment, wouldn't you know it, that the king's minister of publicity entered with a startling piece of news. I've done it, I've done it, your majesty, I've truly done it. Done what? Confound it. Put Bongo Congo on television, your majesty. Network television in the U.S. of A. What? But how? What, what, what kind of a show will it be? A tour, sire. There was a tour of the White House, a tour of Monaco, and now... Yes. And now... Yes! Now it's a tour of the Bongo Congo Palace. Bravo! Oh, why, that's the most unimaginable thing ever imagined. No, oh, but, 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 but the palace, it, it's in terrible shape. What, what can we do? Have no fear, Your Majesty. I will personally say that the right people are hired to clean it from top to bottom. But now we must get to work rehearsing the TV tour. All right, uh, move that equipment uh, over there. Right with in the, with the uh, lights over the there. Confound it, who are these? Hey, you pull my cable there, buddy. Watch it. Now see here, who are all these people? They're from the network, Your Majesty. And here is the producer and narrator of the show, Charles Hollywood. Hmm, no profile at all. In fact, not much of a face. Won't photograph well at all. Of course, it won't be so bad with the other members of the family around. We'll keep them on camera. Where are your children? Your children? I have no children. Oh, bad. Very bad. Where is your wife? I have no wife. Confound it. Oh, terrible. Just terrible. Well, surely your majesty must have an art gallery. Right. Art, you say? Oh, well, my collection is the pride of Bongo Congo. <laughs> Step this way. Now, this is Aristotle contemplating the bust of Leonardo the First. Ah, uh, I've seen only one other like it. Yes, and this is the famous... Mona Linetta posed by my great-grandmother. Striking resemblance. And this? Confounded, what have they done? Why, it's the king's twin nephews, Duke and Earl. Splendid, and twins at that. We must have them on the show. Oh, no. no those, those two are monsters. The most unmanageable brats ever managed. Please, don't say that. You'll ruin your image. Just refer to the children as little darlings. All right, but these little darlings are brats. But Charles Hollywood insisted on the nephews, and the king finally gave in. Will the king's nephews, Duke and Earl, really be as bad as the king expects? And who are those two familiar figures being hired to clean up the palace? 
And with all this, can the King's TV tour possibly be a success? We'll find out in our next episode, A Tour de Foss. Well, good morning, Tudor. But is that you got tucked under the arm, eh? Uh, that's just exactly what I want to see you about, Mr. Wizard. Uh, looky here. My, that's very colorful. But what is it? Uh, this is a genuine bullfighter poster announcing a great bullfight. See? Uh, La Plaza del Toro. Uh, that's Spanish for the place of the bulls. When I saw this poster, I knew that's just what I wanted to be. Will you help me become a famous matador? That's Spanish for bullfighter. How many times must I tell you, Tudor? Things like that is for men, not little turtle boys. Oh, but Mr. Wizard, this time it's different. This time, I've been practicing the watch. First, I need a cape. Uh, this tablecloth will do. Whoops, sorry. Well, anyway, pretend you're the bull. I say, uh, uh, Toro, Toro, uh, that's Spanish for bull, bull. Ho, Toro, ho, Toro, uh, that's Spanish for ho, bull, ho, bull. Uh, then you charge, I wave this here cape and... Uh, Very well, my boy, you win. If you want to be a matador and fight the bulls, I will make you a matador. Bullfighting is very popular sport, and it draws many people. One, when the matador enters, there is great cheering like at the baseball game. The brave matador walks all around the arena, bowing to the spectator. Then, from the other side of the arena, comes the one. All right now, uh, bring on old El Toro. Uh, that's Spanish for bull. Oh, uh, there you are. Okay, let's me and you fight. Ho Toro! Ho Toro! Ho Toro! And the brave matador demonstrates the skill with the cape, which he uses to attract the boy's attention. First, he does the Veronica. And then, the Pasadobro. Hey, shucks, there's nothing to this here bullfighting. And now, to show how brave he is, the brave matador turns his back on the ferocious bull. This is a very dangerous thing to do. To show how skillful he is, the matador shifts to a very small cape. Ho oh, Toro! Ho oh, Toro! Ho oh, Toro! Whoa Toro! Whoa, whoa Toro! Whoa, whoa, I say! This makes the brave matador get very mad. Come on, you big bully, and fight like a man! Experience tells the brave matador that the bull is weakening, and the time has come for what is called the moment of truth. Or, as we say in Spanish, un momento de veridad. The sword, please. The courageous matador approaches the bull. This is where they separate the matadors from the mataboys. All right now, Mr. Bull, on guard. Whoops. Oh, Mr. Wizard! Help! Here we go again. Drizzle, 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 drum. Time for this one to come home. In our last episode, Odie Colonia was away from the palace and King Leonardo was having trouble. And just at this time, the Minister of Publicity had arranged for an important television tour of the Bongo Congo Palace. All right, uh, move that equipment uh, move over there. Right with the uh, lights take over the there. And throw it in. The producer and narrator of the show, Charles Hollywood, insisted that children be included to add a touch of warmth. And so it was decided to use the King's nephews 
Duke and Earl. Oh no, those two are monsters. Meanwhile, two familiar figures had been hired to clean up the palace. Uh, we'll clean up, all right. While everybody's busy with this TV tour, we'll be stealing the royal gold. Uh, what a sap Kingsley will look like when the TV audience sees that. While Biggie and Itchy hurried to the gold room, the king's nephews had arrived in the game room. <laughs> Oh dear, Your Majesty, this is no time for games. Your program is ready to start. And you wait in the game room, Earl. I'm Duke. That's Earl, folks. <laughs> and now, to take us on a tour of the Bongo Congo Palace, here is our host, King Leonardo. Oh, thank you, Mr. Hollywood. Where are we now, Your Majesty? In the palace. But where in the palace? No, oh, this is the art gallery. And directly beneath us are my nephews in the... And these must be your darling nephews. Yes, these are my darling nephews. This is Earl. I'm Duke. That's Earl, folks. <laughs> I'm certain you children must enjoy playing with your Uncle King. Sure, we play horsey like this. Ow! Ow! Ride him, cowboy! Yippee! While the TV tour continued, Biggie and Ditchie were hot at work. We almost got the safe open edge. <laughs> When that TV tour reaches this room and finds the gold gone, Kingsley will look more like a monkey's uncle. But King Leonardo, unaware of this foul play, continued the tour. Now, you youngsters, run along and play. We'll see you later. And uh, what room is in there, Your Majesty? Uh, the blue room. I see. Has it always been the blue room? No, but last year a bad storm blew off the roof. And when it blew off the roof, you called it the Blue Roof. Yes, and we decided to keep it just as it is. And I see this room is named the Orange Room. I suppose <laughs> that's where you keep your oranges. <laughs> yes, yes. These oranges were a gift from the governors of Florida and California. The tour continued until finally they stood before the Gold Room totally unaware of what awaited them inside. And this is our royal gold room. Confound it, what's going on in here? Ooh, we captured these crooks that try to steal your gold. Well, bust my bongos if you didn't. You two boys are really chips off the old family block. Ladies and gentlemen, we've just witnessed a real first on TV tour. But Mr. Hollywood, what about my paintings? We don't have time. A real first, the actual capture of two real live desperados caught gold-handed by these... But you haven't seen the chandeliers in the rock candy crystal room. Take them away, boys. Captured by these two outstanding nephews. Put me down, confound it! Put me down! The king's nephews who came to the rescue. Yes, for Duke and Earl had not only saved the royal treasury, but saved the King's TV tour as well. But what new evil did Biggie plot? Don't miss the next adventure of the King and Odie. Episode, Simon Bar Sinister had built a forget-me-net, which would make Underdog forget who he was. But how are we going to get near enough to Underdog to throw the net over him? Simple. We'll just commit a fiendish crime, and when Underdog comes to the rescue, we'll throw the net over him. There it is, Cad. Timpani's Jewelry Store. Hand me the brick, please. Brick. Thank you. Grab the jewels. Ah! Stay where you are! Call Underdog! That's right, call Underdog. Underdog! Underdog! But at that very moment, Underdog was busy out in the Pacific Ocean, taming a typhoon. Boy, what?
got a haul. Look at all those sparklers. Nah, I want it underdog, not diamonds. If I can just get rid of him, we'll have all the diamonds we can use. We'll have the whole world. Our next crime must be really fiendish. I know. We'll rob toy stores. Kids will never stand for that. Underdog will have to show up. All right, everybody, hands up. This is a robbery. My, what a realistic toy. I wonder if it runs on batteries. Simon says, hands up. Oh, how cute. I must buy it for Johnny. Claire? Which is the funny little monster? Simon says, hands up! That's better. We can't load up the truck. You can't do that. Think of all the kids. <laughs> Why don't you call Underdog? Underdog! 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 But once again, Underdog was occupied elsewhere, rounding up a band of pirates that had been robbing ships all over the world. Look in the air. It's a plane. It's a bird. It's a frog. A frog? Not plane, nor bird, nor even frog. It's that meddling hero, Underdog. Shoot him down. Again, he didn't show up. What are we going to do with all these toys? Silence! I have to think. Sweet Polly. We'll capture Sweet Polly, and sooner or later, Underdog will have to come and rescue her. And so, dear friends, that ends another news broadcast for this evening. I'll be back with you again tomorrow. Oh! She won't be back tomorrow, or the next day, or the next. She won't be back at all. Unless Underdog comes to rescue her. <laughs> Will Underdog come to rescue sweet Polly? Will he get caught in the forget-me-net? There's plenty of excitement ahead in our next episode.